was giving you the artists that are shaping the rock landscape of today and the band is seventh day slumber joseph is with me and we need to give their tune halos a push i'll tell you about that in a bit joseph first off how's it going man dude it's going good man thanks for having me on the show man I'm absolutely super- yeah it's going now- great i'm actually in uh at home in nashville right now we we were out for um I guess it was probably about 10 or 11 shows. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it, it was, at th- there were nine of them in a row, which is fine. Um, except I was having a little bit of issues with my, with my voice on that one, man. And, and so it was a little rough, but it's, so it's good to be home <laughs> for a few days. And, and then we're heading out, um, heading out in another week or so with a band called breathing theory. Oh, breathing theory. Good guys. Good yeah. They guys. Are, they're real real cool dudes. And and so we're bringing them out for, uh, just a kind of a, a short club date run. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome, man. Uh, no, you said that, uh, Nashville, I was going to ask you about this because some of the stuff says that you guys are from Dallas and some says you're from Nashville. Why yeah. is that? So the band's been around, you know, over 20 years and yeah. we started in Dallas, um, uh, and we, but we've been in Nashville now for about 20 years. Um, and so it's, it's, uh, it still says that we, cause we did, uh, I'm originally a Texas boy, even though I've been in Nashville for 20 years. Um, I'm, I'm, I was raised in Texas. So, uh, I still consider myself, a, well, I'm, I'm Texas CN, I guess. <laughs> okay. I just made that up right Texas there. Texas <laughs> Hey, it works, man. Now, uh, you guys have been together for a long time, but this isn't the only incarnation or the first incarnation of the band, is it? You've you've had some changes over the years, haven't you? Yeah, it's it's crazy because I I started the band. I mean, like I said, over twenty years ago, and it was just me and. Um, a buddy of mine, actually a dude named BJ Dufrin, man. And he didn't want to be in the band. He just had a couple of songs that he wanted to record. He was a drummer. And, and he asked me if I would go in with him on some studio time and record a couple of songs. And I was like, sure, man, you want to start a band or something? And he was like, nah, I don't, (laughs) I don't want to be in the band. He's like, I just wrote a song for my dad and I've always wanted to record it. And maybe we could do a couple of shows around around Dallas. And I was like, all right, dude. So we started it. And I said, what are we going to be called? And he's like, how about Seventh Day Slumber? And I was like, I didn't know what it meant. I was like, all right, dude, let's rock. And so (laughs) the first time. Yeah, we went into the studio and we um, started recording just a couple of the songs. And I liked it. I wanted to stick with it. And. I kept the name and I've had some lineup changes um, throughout the years, but we had a solid lineup for the past, you know, 15 years or so. And um, my brother-in-law, Jeremy, uh, he's now back home. And so for the past three years, we've had a new guitar player. And then our drummer uh, went to Sacramento and he's a pastor now, actually, in Sacramento. And so my son, who's a Nashville drummer, um, he's playing drums now. So it's pretty pretty amazing. But that's been the lineup. Blaze, uh, my son, Weston, our guitar player. Um, Ken's been in the band for a long, long time, Ken Reed. And um, and so, but it's it's a it's a new vibe, man, for sure with my son and Weston writing a lot of the newer stuff. Well, that's going to be kind of a trip too. I mean, what is it like to be playing shows and turn around and see Blaze back there? It's nuts, man. Like it's, it's hard to explain because like, I didn't have a dad growing up. I mean, I, I, I I was a drug addict. I've been in and out. I've been locked up from Texas to California. Oh, wow. I I had a messed up life, man. A a real rugged, grimy life, man. And so to, to now be a father and, and, and pretty good one, you know, I got three sons, my wife and I do. uh, But to have one of my sons, actually my 21 year old son, Blaze playing 
the drums and looking back and seeing like he's not just good for like a dad letting his kid play in a band. I mean, he's in Nashville. Yeah. He's born and raised in Nashville and he's a sick he's a better musician than I I've ever been and will ever be. But um but it's crazy to look back and see like that's my kid, dude. Like <laughs> that's crazy, dude. We're rocking out. And my wife Lori is our tour manager and uh so all three of my kids, all three of our kids have been uh tour bus schooled, I guess you would call it. <laughs> Yeah. Almost, well, it, it's almost like a family affair yeah. for the most part. It's like, uh, uh, I'm sure your other kids like will pick up slack if you need it, won't they? Oh, yeah, man. My other two sons are actually, um, they actually work for Seventh Day Slumber. And, um, you know, they they make they make good money. They, they make a decent little living. And I got a 15-year-old son. He's not really doing anything. Uh, like, he didn't have a ton of bills, but... My 18 year old son, you know, he had to takes care of uh, his his bills and things like that. And then Blaze is 21 and covers his his bills. And, you know, the, it's crazy that I'm I'm actually able to provide my kids, n- not just provide for them since, you know, they were little, but actually provide for them a, a way to provide for themselves. And um, and it, it's funny, man, because I look back on it. I was like, dude, I'm able to provide uh, for my kids. But in a way, Blaze writing these songs and writing this new album, Death by Admiration, is is providing for his own dad. Like the, that record is is killing it right now, not just on radio, but streaming wise and touring wise. It's just a whole fresh new sound feel and breathe new life into the into Seventh Day Slumber. I mean, you know, I I've I've been doing it so long that I. And and then I, I know that maybe some of the listeners don't know us from like the Christian rock side of it. You know, we're a Christian hard rock band and we were a well-known Christian, still are a well-known Christian hard rock band. I've made a good living. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, we sold half a million albums, won some awards. I bought a beautiful home and, and we've toured all over the world. So, you know, I was to a point where I was kind of like, man, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. And when my son started writing and Weston, our guitar player, started writing these new songs, it it got me. It did something to me, man. It hyped me up, dude, and made oh, me really? feel that type of way. And I was ready to tour, and we've been touring, man, a lot of a lot of touring, a lot of touring. Now, one thing you brought up something that uh, uh, I w- decided I wanted to ask you about because I was always curious about this. Uh, years ago, I worked at one station that used to play a program, and I don't know if it's even still around. It was a syndicated show called Sunrise, and uh, it had a lot of Christian rock acts on it that would go on, actually, to chart and then fall away from the Christian rock thing. Yeah. And have you seen a lot of, are there a lot of posers in that? So that's, there's two answers to that. Well, the, the first answer is yes, there are a lot of posers. Okay. Second answer is this is a brutal industry. The music industry in general is a brutal industry. But when you talk about Christian rock, and I'm not here to badmouth Christians, you know, because yeah. I am one. And I'm look, I'm not ashamed of my faith. I'll go on any station. I'll go anywhere, man. And any hood, any club, any church, it don't matter. I'll, I'll I'm I'm not ashamed of my of my of my faith. But I gotta say. This industry is brutal. It's one thing when you're in the music industry and people are stealing from you. It's another thing when they hide behind the name of Jesus to steal from you. And it can break a person, dude. And so where you may start with the best intentions and and want to be writing music that is not preachy, but you want to encourage people and you want to let them know yeah. that they're not alone and there really is a God in heaven. And I realize you got people listening that don't believe in God. And I got love for you. I hope you come to one of our shows. I'm not going to. I'm not going to preach, shove Jesus down your throat. You know, we'll, we'll come hang out with you and chill. It's all good. But what I'm saying is that these bands really had the best intentions, a lot of them, and they got hit so hard. They got judged from going to church and looking like I do. I'm tatted up all over my, you know, my chest, my legs, my hands, whatever. And it's, it's like, 
you can get judged by your own people. So, so, and then you get judged for being a Christian rock band because people think it's like this preachy music. And it's like, dude, these bands rock harder than, yeah. you, than a lot of the bands out there. So, so you're not really accepted where you're going. You're not really accepted where you've been, where you're from. And so you get in this middle place here and it's, and it's, you start to sit with a lot of pain. And I've seen a lot of these bands that turned away from like Jesus and turned away from being a Christian because they judged God by what ignorant people, and I'm going to call them ignorant people, by what, what ignorant people said and did. Because it's ignorant to think that if you look like me, you can't know who Jesus is. Yeah. And so I don't know that that answer is hard because I've met a lot of posers. I met a lot of dudes that couldn't make it in in the rock genre rock world so they went christian rock and and it was you know and then i met a lot of dudes that were easily as good as any band out there but they they had an encounter with god and it changed their life and dude like i said man i was i was i was a dope fiend dude i was a criminal i you know, I've robbed, I've stolen, I, I've done a lot of bad things, things at, I'm ashamed at, of. At what age did that start? So when did I was 12 years old, I started thinking about suicide. And at that moment, at 12, oh, when wow. I started thinking about taking my life, um, I ended up, did, I didn't really care. And, and I started taking pills and drinking at 12 years old. Wow. Using drugs and alcohol at 12. And Dude, I'm going to say this because it's true, but it was the only time that I actually fe felt like normal, you know, when I took dope or when I was drinking or whatever, like it, and, and I don't, and I wasn't, now I look back on it, obviously it was really just drowning out the pain because I was hurting badly. Okay. And, um, and dude, so 12 years old by 14, I was already selling dope and, uh, running with some serious, like seriously bad crowd i was in trouble with the law at about nine or ten years old i broke into my first home uh with some older kids in the neighborhood my mom had to work 12 hours 12 hours a day sometimes you know she was selling furniture at at uh sears they had a furniture department and um and so well they used to have a sears but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so so she was working a lot of hours and our babysitters used to beat on us. So my mom pulled us out. And then one, uh, we had a babysitter that abused my brother in a different way when I was in the, um, in the room. And it, and, it, and so we stopped staying at, and we started, my brother's two years older. He started kind of watching us, but I was a wild kid, man. So he was, couldn't really watch me. Okay. So yeah, I started young, man. I've been through a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of abuse. So, the listeners and viewers right now, I know that some of them are listening. And they, they probably been through a lot of the stuff that I've been through and maybe, you know, even worse and maybe some not as bad, but they know what it means to hurt. And so um, I write, I write music that I feel like relates to the people. I don't try to write Christian songs and I don't try to write general market songs. I can't stand that when Christian man, like, yeah. man, I need to write a general market hit. You know, I'll leave Jesus out and I'll do this and I'll make it a general market hit. I don't. Oh, care. so actually some some Christian bands do try to do that. Actually <laughs> try to hit some general market stuff that's going to get some radio airplay. Oh, yeah, man. That happened. I mean, that happens all the time in the in the Christian music industry. It's like, all right, we need to write us a kind of a, a, a general market song. And, you know, but I also know people that are like man, we need to write a Christian song because, you know, they're, they're like, we need, we're not getting played on Christian radio and we, you know, we're not getting played on general market radio, but we're not getting played on Christian radio, but we need to write a Christian song. So they put Jesus in the song like eight times and like, okay, that's, that's probably going to get played. It happens on both sides, dude. And that's yes. why I'm saying I don't write music for the Christian market and I don't write music for the general market. I, if true art, really comes from within here then whatever is in here is going to come out in your music and um and when you overtly like when you try to write a christian song it's going to sound cheesy and you know I, I hate to say it but 
a lot of it does, you know, but I don't know. Once again, I don't want to sound judgmental because I've been judged. I've been judged harshly, dude. And, and so I'm not trying to be that guy, but those are facts. Those are big old facts. The, uh, I, I, you know, I totally get that. And I, uh, love the fact that you talk about the honesty in your songwriting and that, uh, uh, you're tuning halos. And, uh, is this, this your first release off of death by admiration? Was this uh, the first? We released one other song called what I've become, but we did not release it, um, to mainstream rock. It was only released on Christian rock radio and it went to number one and, and it, and it, I, I think that we should release it to mainstream rock because what I've become is it's a song about, about how, like what you were talking about, like, how did I end up here? Uh, I started off this way and then like, I lost my faith and I ended up this way. And now I don't even like who I am. Okay. And, and it's a sick song, dude. So I, we may release it. I'd love to have somebody like Josie Scott on it. And like re re release it, you know. Oh, okay. So should we do do a collab with somebody and re release? And yeah. okay, but all right. Halos was our first uh, mainstream rock single off this record. Okay, and uh, Halos. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it almost sounds like it's an open letter to somebody. Well, so yeah. So here, so it's, it's written from a real play. Like it's written from a real place, man. Um, our guitar player, Weston, um, he, he sent me this music and he said, Hey man, I, I got him. I, I got something I want to say. And I was like, dude, what's up? And he said, I, here's the music, but there's a, a topic I want to write about. And I haven't told y'all this. He said, so one of our friends died, right? Like a buddy of ours, big time fan of seventh day slumber. I mean, went to every show when we were in the Louisiana area, man, he came, he drove hours to come see us anywhere. We were close to the South or whatever, but, um, but he died, man. And, and Weston told me he died unexpectedly. And Weston told me what I didn't tell y'all is that he wrote me a couple of days before that and said he really needed to talk to me or, uh, you know, wanted to talk to me about something. And I didn't write him back. And he's like, I, I saw it. I read it, but I didn't, I didn't want to write him back. Or maybe he, he just saw the topic or whatever. Uh, but he didn't write him back. And a couple of days later he died. And Weston was like, dude, I, I didn't make time for him. And this dude always makes time for us. This dude drives hours to come see us, makes us food, like just a cool stand up dude. Wow. And so he's like, man, so I want to write a song. But Weston also knows that. If, unfortunately, I've known a lot of people that have committed suicide or overdosed on, you know, on drugs or whatever. But this one particular girl, man, my wife and I, we we've been like, we've been helping her for years um, just to get her like she struggled with depression real bad and just to encourage her. Right. So my wife and I've okay. always been there for her um, and she started doing well. Right. And then she started this whole like movement, a semicolon movement where you get in that semicolon tattoo. And like, she started this whole movement, but uh, her life changed at 12 years old at a seventh day slumber concert. Like she just, like started wanting to, to go deeper with God. She wanted to change her life. She anyway, uh, long story short, it's a long story about halos, but I, but I promise you it, it means something at here's what happened. So she started going through depression again and she called me and told me that she was going to take her life. And I, I, she was like, I'm going to do it tonight. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. Wow. I mean, I, I said everything I could say and she said, Hey, I'm going to do it. I don't care. Uh, I'm done living. I just want to say bye or whatever. She hung up and I could not call. I called and called and couldn't get a hold of her. So, um, I, uh, I called the, I called the police, man. I called, I did, I had a welfare check done on her and, and I don't, and I, and I'm not sorry for doing it because I, you know, but anyway, she got, they, they found her. She was okay, but she was so mad at me. And then the next time she talked to me, she cussed me out like hardcore. She cussed me really? out. Well, she was just hurting, man. I don't blame her for that. Like she was just, she was just hurting, you know, and, and, uh, 
anyway, uh, I wasn't trying to Takashi six nine her, man. Like I wasn't trying to rat on her, dude. You yeah. know, I mean, it was just she I, I care about her. I didn't want to see her take her life. So anyway, she cussed me out or whatever and, and, and like said some pretty deep, some pretty deep things that cut deep. So anyway, the end of the story goes that she uh, she wrote me and said, I need to talk. I need to talk now. This was a couple of weeks later. And I told my wife, Lori, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm done, man. I'm not going to talk to her. And like two days, day and a half later, she had committed suicide. Mm. I lived with that. And I lived with it like hardcore. I blamed myself. I, I, I lived with it, man. And even though I should know better, like, dude, it's, I didn't, I didn't make that decision for her. Yeah. I was trying to help. Like, even though I should know better, I, it still was hurting. And so Weston and I both had these stories, but we thought how many more people right now are dealing with loss, like in our nation from COVID to fentanyl overdoses, to suicide through the roof right now to 22 veterans a day committing suicide to the list goes on, man. How many people didn't get to say bye to someone who died in the hospital and their family wasn't allowed in there? How many people yeah. did get to say goodbye to their son or daughter who overdosed or committed anyway halos just comes from a real place of like things left unsaid and it's a healing it's healing for me that song is and for weston and it's been healing for a lot of other people that's what uh it sounded like when i i would listen to it and uh well when that first got uh serviced and i first heard it i just uh i I think I listened to it like three times in a row and I was like, this sounds like he's speaking to someone. So actually it's a conglomeration of people. Yeah. Basically you're, you're speaking to the fans, anyone who's listening to the song. And then also some of these people you've been talking about. And then also like people who are going through some of the same things also that these yeah. other people, you know, have been going through. So what a cool song, what a cool thing to, Oh, just put out there, man. And uh, you guys took one step back on, uh, well, we, we sourced from the foundations charts and mm -hmm. you took one step back on foundations. And uh, I was like, man, we got to get these guys on here and uh, give the song a push. And the cool thing is uh, when I have a band on here, my listeners, uh, they will actually uh, call up radio stations. Like, some of them can't even aren't even near the stations can't even hear it go through a phone book or whatever and just request the songs to try to help these bands get pushed up the charts and i want to see halos like start rising i really really do this is this, this is a freaking good song man and i i have a feeling i have not heard the whole album but i have a feeling you have a hell of a lot more stuff coming don't you that is really going to resonate with people yeah, we, we do. And I just want to tell you, thank you, man, because you, you, you did believe in us and, and it means a lot to us seriously. And to all your listeners, I appreciate you guys. You know, it's, it's hard to overcome that kind of that stigma of being a Christian rock band. And, and, and like I said, we don't, I just write music that I, I hope resonates with people. Um, but I appreciate you playing it and it means a lot to us. Uh, I, I I feel like it's needed right now. Not, not like seventh day slumber going up the charts, although that, Hey, by the way, that is cool. And I'm not going to lie. It's like, wow, man, this is, this is really um, like impactful because it's moving up. But, but, I, but I, I honestly, I know people need this. There are people that are just hurting right now, man. They're struggling. They're going through and to, and to know that somebody else, identifies with that with their pain um and and sometimes it's you know it's okay to sometimes you know it's okay to to admit you know that that you, you either blamed yourself or admit that you haven't dealt with certain things it's okay to man you got to get it out and so i'm hoping this song allows people to have some kind of healing the video we we did, you should check out the video. That video, we instead of just making it all about seventh day slumber rocking out, 
um, there are some shots of us playing, but it's uh, some performance shots. But the video more is more about um, we opened it up to all of our fans or not even just our fans, just anybody who has suffered the loss of, you know, losing someone they love and and not having the words, maybe not spending time with them or not being able to say the things they want to say. And so we said, hey, listen, send us a picture of your loved one. Um, and we want to honor the memory of your loved one. But also, if you had just like a few seconds right now to say something to them, what would you say? Write it down. And they sent us their their little, you know, sentences or paragraphs and a picture of their loved one. And we put it in our video. And there were so many that we haven't we haven't released the extended version because there were so many. We couldn't put them all in the three minutes of that video. Yeah, but we fit quite a bit. But it is a. Man, when I got the edited version, because I didn't see it uh, until it was done. I didn't want to. But when I got the edited version, dude, I was bawling like a little baby. Dude. <laughs> it just man. it just gives you the feels, man. Yeah, yeah. Real. Uh, that's up on the website, realrocknights.com. People can check it out. Uh, also, uh, dude, go to YouTube. You can fall down the Seventh Day Slumber rabbit hole because you guys have so much good stuff, man. Uh, I have to find a different way to talk about socials, but um, we'll do that. Uh, well, I'll figure out a way later. But uh, because when I started doing this, uh, it was there was no Internet. We had the AP. That was the closest thing to Internet. And we had to rip, rip the wire, basically. Yeah. And then the Internet came in around 95 and uh, you had chat rooms, little things, but bands weren't really doing anything. Friendster came along, which was MySpace before MySpace. And a few bands like jumped on there. But anyway, what I'm saying was there was, wasn't really the social networking thing that started. Then when MySpace came out in like uh, the mid 2000s, I think it was or early 2000s, uh, then that's when people grabbed the hold and took off. And now it's all over. But if people go to your website, seventhdayslumber.com, they can get to all your socials, can't they? Yeah, yeah, they can. Um, and there's a bunch of there's a bunch of stuff there. We we've got 13 albums out. A lot of people don't know that. Well, in the Christian rock market, they do, you know, they but we have well, even some of them don't know we have that many albums, but um three of them are like hard rock worship albums because we also we you know we also love worship music and and uh but but 10 of them are hard rock albums and and so you'll see a mixture and, and you may go on there and go oh man this doesn't sound like the band that sings halos it's because that's <laughs> that's, a, that's a worship album you know okay. we did three of those but like i said 10 of them are hard rock uh records and but our death by admiration album I, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that I think is going to resonate in a big way with with listeners because it's it's real, man. It's and it's current. It's like what we're kind of like all feeling and dealing with. Um, and, it, and and I don't mean from a political standpoint, like who you voted for, nothing like that. I'm talking about just in terms of like life and how the times we're living in. It's, it's it's a lot there but it's not all about pain it's there's also anthems about like haters and 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 shrugging off those haters dude and people that want that are preying on your downfall and uh and you know and so there's there's anthems about that there's songs about like you remember that old school song uh how does it go how do rumors get started get oh started. yeah rumors yeah, rumors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i was trying to remember that the other day but <laughs> uh, we we kind of wrote uh, uh, the same topic. Obviously, it doesn't sound anything like that song. Rumors, but uh, but we have a song that's that's similar uh, to that man, and and uh, and it's on that record. So we've got something for for everybody. It's just about kind of like speaking speaking bad on somebody and and how damaging it can be, especially when you don't have all all the facts, you know. Um, but we got a song called Snake Mouth on there, too, um, where there's a band called Relent and um, they're they're our label mates. And um, Miggy, the lead singer of Relent, who's also the, one of the percussionists for El Nino, um, they uh, that song's a pretty deep song. That one is is about 
people in the church like that look down on others. And it's a that's a pretty hardcore song, Snake Mouth. I would encourage people to check it out. But yeah, I mean, the whole Death by Admiration album, there's only one ballad on that record. It's it's all just hard hitting in your face, uh, hard rock. But there's one ballad, and that song is Can't Say Sorry Enough. And that's a song I wrote to my wife um, just about, you know, 10 years into being married to her, 10 years into, like, I, now I have this band. I, I went from being literally homeless, living on the streets of Austin, Texas, in an alleyway, eating out of garbage cans for real, to, like, being a homeowner, a husband, a father and and I got lax dude and um and I started drinking again and uh and right in the middle of my marriage my wife and I've been married 23 years but right in the middle of my marriage dude I I I became an alcoholic oh. and, and dude it was it was rough like it, it and it hurt my wife it hurt my kids to see their daddy like that and um and that was years ago and I'm man I'm I'm doing awesome, but I, but it, I wrote this song. Can't say sorry enough uh, for my wife. It's like, even though she forgives me and she loves me and she's my biggest cheerleader, my, my, my best friend. Um, and she forgives me. It's still hard for me to believe that she could forgive me. Like after hurting her bad like that. Uh, so that's the only ballad on the record. It was going to go on no matter what. I sent it to my homie, uh, Kellen McGregor. He plays guitar for Memphis Mayfire. He actually co-produced this record and mixed the record. Um, and I sent it to him. I was like, dude, I want to, here's a song I wrote for my wife, dude. I want to put this on the, the record. I wrote it with a buddy of mine named Josiah Prince from a band called Disciple. And, uh, and so we like, I told Kellen, dude, I, I don't know if I should stick this on. He's like, dude, this is probably one of my favorite uh, jams off the off the record, man. Oh, really? He's like, we got to put it on there, so we did, and he added some really cool strings and made it sound real cool. But yeah, give it that. And I was going to ask you about uh, if uh, the producers on this album, because uh, your sound is so full and so all encompassing. And as far as you talking about. Uh, uh, Christian rock band. I didn't even know that until Eric over at major label entertainment told me that yeah. you guys Eric, were a Christian rock. And I'm just like, really? You know? And then uh, that's when I started looking at some of your past stuff and I was like, okay, all right. Awesome. Well, I, I was like, I can't wait to talk to this guy. Uh, tours and live shows, man. Now uh, you just got off. Eric, <laughs> Eric told me he was like when we were talking. He was like, uh, "So you want to do Monday?" He just got off tour, and it's uh, like he can probably do Monday. I was like, "Let him rest, man. Let's do Tuesday." <laughs> yeah. But uh, you're going back out. Uh, what is it? November third, doing mm -hmm. a bunch of uh, Seventh Day Slumber shows, and then uh, uh, you are gonna jump on the run with Fozzy their uh, rescheduled save the world tour aren't you yeah actually um that tour was supposed to be happening now but yeah i got rescheduled for for uh the spring pretty like pretty excited about that uh tour um chris jericho's a great dude actually everybody in that band is super super cool um billy gray is uh the guitar one of the guitar players for there he plays in a in a band called tattoo the scars um dude he's he's like super supportive of our band and uh all that whole team is that whole fozzy team so i'm super stoked about going out on that tour um that's going to be a lot of fun and then we've got a couple of tours in the works we um you know possibly in december we just played with saliva at a at a at a the ultimate tailgating party at, at for a station, but we were supposed to pos we were supposed to be on tour with them in November, but that ended up not working out. So we'll see how that looks for December. But but we've got some big um, some big stuff coming up in 2023. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty pretty crazy. And someone asked me like, are y'all gonna stop playing? like Christian venues or churches or whatever. And the answer is no, we're not. Um, but, you know, there have been some that said, we're not going to 
invite you anymore because y'all are playing a bunch of club dates. And we're like, dude, but people don't understand. We've been playing club dates since we first started this band. Our manager wasn't even a Christian for many, many years. Our manager was Carol Peters and she managed us Hart and Dina Carter. And, uh, you know, so, but anyway, we're, we're going to continue It's from the, from the pews to the pubs, from the pubs to the pews, whoever's going to have us, we're going to come and we're going to, and we're going to rock out, dude. You know, okay. And what is the reason that they don't want you because you're doing club shows? So that's only a handful of people. I want to get that straight. There's a, most people, okay. like, dude, that's what's up. Y'all go do it, man. Bring hope to people. If people are struggling, whatever, but you got a few that um, were like, y'all, you know, y'all are supposed to be uh, an example and you're over here playing in bars and pushing alcohol. And it's like, dude, first of all, we're not pushing alcohol. I'm sober. <laughs> like, you know, um, but I'm not going to sit and look down on people, dude. Like, I'm just not going to do it. And I'm in a position right now where I already told you, like, if, if my son hadn't started writing music and, and Weston writing music, I, I may have just retired, dude, and like started counseling or doing doing something another different field or whatever i've i've done all the things in in at least on the christian rock side of it i've accomplished a lot of those goals that that i've wanted to accomplish but most importantly our music has impacted a lot of people over the years so for me i'm like whatever like if you don't invite me to come to your spot because i'm you know playing at another place you don't agree with that's on you i'm going to continue to do what i'm doing and as long as as long as people are still inviting us to come play, we're going to come play. Okay. Awesome. Uh, well, Joseph, it was awesome to talk to you and, uh, I'm, I'm glad to actually, uh, let everyone, everybody hear my, uh, your story and everybody get up close and personal with seven day slumber. And what do you say? We'd let people finally listen to halos. Yeah, man. Thanks again. Okay. Okay, thank you so, so much. This, my friends, Seventh Day Slumber and their tune, Halos. Click the latest video right here, right now. And don't forget to like and subscribe.